Facebook parent Meta rising in the pre-market, but the company has lost a third of its market value so far this year, and most of that drop occurred after last week's earnings report. Meta closed yesterday's session with a market valuation below $600 billion. Let's bring in Keybank, a key bank capital markets equity research analyst Justin Patterson to talk about where it goes from here. Uh, Justin, obviously the market is uh, like three days of really just heavy liquidation, Im implying that uh, the outlook for uh, profitability for the company is a lot less reliable, probably a lot less uh, strong uh, in the coming years. You did trim revenue and earnings estimates a bit, but where, where is the run rate from here in terms of growth? And how's the valuation look relative to that? That's a great question. Facebook's going through a business model transition, hence the name change toward Meta. And it's also lapping challenging comps. It's dealing with the Apple privacy issues. It's dealing with TikTok. So really, over the next two quarters, you're going to be looking at a business that's growing mid-high single digits top line. So really, we don't get a true barometer of underlying trends until the second half of the year, where we think this can go back toward high teens growth. And then as you come out with the higher revenue growth rate, you start absorbing that fixed cost, that investment cycle spend, and then you see margins recover. So right now you're looking at a business that's trading at a mid-high teens earnings multiple. Historically, that's inexpensive for Facebook. So as we see progress with Reels, the TikTok competitor, you can start feeling more confident that the stock goes higher. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, even though the stock was down, it did close about $4 off its low during the day. Very, very heavy volume. So clearly people are wondering if this level around the pre-pandemic uh, price for the stock is, is some kind of uh, floor for the short term for value. But how much of a bet does an investor right now have to be making on how fruitful the, the investments in Metaverse are going to be and these billions that that Meta is spending in that area. I just wonder if right now you have, you're going to have an investor base that says, listen, buy back a lot more stock, you know, milk the high margins on the legacy business and try to get the ad targeting right, as opposed to, you know, sort of making these huge wagers on the next phase of, uh, you know, of digital communication. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. There is a definite capital allocation question here because, you know, to your point, the metaverse is going to be a very distant payoff here. We still have a subset of virtual reality devices uh, that are in households today. So it's going to take time to see those returns. Whereas in the immediate term, we have TikTok as a competitor, which is weighing on daily active user growth and necessitating this shift toward real. So um, while it's great to talk about the future, if you lose the present, that future state doesn't really matter too much. So I think what we're all watching near term is just how does this reels progression go? Can that stabilize daily active users, drive more engagement? And can that really start to monetize? If that happens, yes, we can all feel a lot more confident about Meta's future state. So, Justin, I mean, given the fact that you still have an overweight rating on the stock, if an investor had money to put to work in one name right now, would it be Meta or would it be another name that you cover? I think Meta still offers attractive returns right here. It's, again, historically inexpensive. We've already had a very broad derating estimates of reset lower. So as we start to see progress with real, start to see advertising revenue improve, I think uh, the business looks better over the course of the year, and you don't have that much downside from these levels.